there is no need for there to be a tutorial which tells you to press shift D and place a light over here. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on where to place your lights. This is more about the theory of where your light should be placed and why. So today I'm going to teach you exactly how to create good studio lighting each and every time you open Blender. So first of all, I'm going to press on N and the first thing we see with this model is that it's way too big. You can get the model on Gumroad for free by the way, or you can follow the previous two tutorials in order to follow along with this tutorial. We have dimensions of 3 meter 76. If we add a cube, for example, which is two by two by two, we can immediately see that this headphone is way too big. So I'm going to change that. I will select our main controller right here. And what we want to do is make sure that we're working in scale. It's not particularly necessary. We could light this very well just using area lights. But if we want to add some bokeh, for example, so let's say we were to place the camera right here, and we want to have a bokeh on this side, select this mesh, for example, and then decrease the app stop. Let's go over to cycles. Then we have to use some pretty weird values in order to get that right. So now it's on two and for a camera, a normal f-stop, for example, is 2.8, 2.8, 3.2. Those are the normal type of f-stops that you will be using when you're trying to create bokeh in an actual camera. Uh, right now we don't have that bokeh, we cannot see it. We have to use extreme values in order to get something that resembles it. So if you want to animate this later on with this exact lighting setup, well, we're gonna have a problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the scale of this model. So as I just said, it is 3.76. We should make it smaller. I'm going to press S.1 and that will make it one tenth the length. 37 centimeters. I still think that's pretty big. I know you have a very big brain, but I as a small pea brain person definitely need to scale this down a bit more. So perhaps we can do something like 17 centimeters. I don't know if that's correct. Maybe we can make it slightly smaller. I'm just going to roll with it. I didn't look up the measurements. Shift S, selection to cursor, and we're going to move it all the way over there. You might be wondering why are we working with such a small mesh but if i now place this camera right here and i will use the f-stop once again which we still have enabled i'm going to set it to 2.8 which is normal now we actually get some realistic bokeh okay you can already see that those values are a lot more normal and are values that are actually used in a camera instead of 0.1 there is no lens that does 0.1 uh, that's pure digital uh, magic. Plus we have a lot more fine-grained results as well. So we have way more options right now instead of only being able to use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, uh, stuff like that. We now have a whole range which we can use in order to adjust our bokeh. I like to work in this fashion, especially when I'm going to animate it. If it's just a lighting thing, then maybe not. Then maybe it doesn't matter that much. Now, what you'll also see is we have a 10 watt area light here and it's lighting the entire thing so we don't need these absurd huge numbers like 10,000 stuff like that if you ever struggle with that it's probably because your skill is off so I'm going to select alt R and I'm going to tell you something about lighting in general so I've been thinking about how to explain lighting because most of the time it's just looking at it you know there is a light you can place the light around and this will generate some type of result for you. There is no need for there to be a tutorial which tells you to press shift D and place a light over here. You can do that already. Actually, what you're seeking is knowing what good lighting actually looks like and why it looks like that. So what I've come up with is that we're first going to set the world strength to zero to make it entirely black. And right now we can see our lighting in a different manner than you normally do. If you don't do this, Actually, you're going to get this fill light, but it's grayish and I don't like it. Now, if you look at a model like this, which is completely black and you have a black background, then the light is basically the only thing saving it. If we have this one, for example, uh, there really isn't much going on, but we also want to make sure that we get the shape right. So when we look at it like this, sure, you might be thinking, all right, so this might be a headphone, but it's not clear from the first visual cue. First time you see this image, you should know this is a headphone. And especially when it's a bit farther away, you might be in doubt as to what this is. So one of the things that light should do is give it contours. We should give contours to this model to make sure that everybody who sees the image for the first time knows exactly what it is. 
and we can do that like this for example so now let's have a look at this we can immediately see even with the dark background what this object is supposed to represent this is a headphone you can definitely see that the contours are Clear. clear separation between the foreground and the background and the foreground in this case is going to be the product which is pretty much always going to be the foreground so the first step is to make sure that all the contours are so clear that we can immediately see what this object is now the next step is to try and make it look a bit more beautiful by adding some contrast between the light values so what's going on here is this light right here is a bit stronger than this light. And what you'll often see in websites or in any form of graphic design is a gradient. So there might be parts that are lighter and parts that are darker. Rarely is it ever fully black. You don't want to do this because afterwards in post-processing, you can always make something black. It's a lot easier to destroy light data where there is light data instead of bringing light data where nothing is there. This is basically just a black pixel, okay? So it's a lot harder to add something to it instead of removing it. We want to make sure that everything is a bit more filled in. And the way you do that is by placing a light that's bigger. Uh, the bigger the light, the softer it becomes. So now we have a soft light and it's filling in the shadows, as you can see. So if we scale this down, it becomes harder. If we scale this up, still filling in the shadows you can play around with the light power and if we turn this off you'll be able to see what this adds completely dark and a bit more back and once again if you want to remove this later on no problem we can do that we at least now have light data now what i like to do is light from the back first let's take an area light let's make it small because i want this to be hard i'm going to rotate this and i'm going to rotate that in such a fashion so that we have a rim light coming from the back and then we also have this soft light right here which is going to make this softer and finally what we can do looking at our camera position i'm going to place it somewhere over here anyways uh, maybe a bit more on a 45 degree angle like over here and I'm also going to make it 80 millimeters GZZ and I want to look up to it RXX so it seems a bit more powerful but anyway this light is going to be a rim light like this this is going to be a harder light then we have a softer light and this will bring us to a point where we have a lot of contrast. We are basically trying to bring contrast to the right places. And what I like to do is film from the angle uh, where the rim light is on the opposite side. And then right here, I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to turn it around, scale it up. And from this side, we can also make it a bit stronger and maybe decrease the spread and then play around with the power like this. So what have we got now? So this light, if I turn it off, is removing this extra rim, this extra highlight on the side. And I really think this adds a lot to it. And now the, the other light, so let me turn those two off. Now we can see that it's a headphone. But when we turn this one back on, we get a bit stronger highlights and right here as well. And the final one, is basically making sure that we actually see something instead of it being just a silhouette now it's actually getting some lighting and finally i like to have a logo streak or at least some light in the logo something like that and then decrease the power by a whole lot you can play around with this i want the back to be a bit more dark than the front once again we are working with gradients here uh, because if this is entirely white g and y it's just too much i want it to be a bit more of a gradient from dark to light or from light to dark i think that looks better we now have the basic setup for this lighting pattern so let me turn off everything one by one so we started off with the contours and there should be enough of them to actually see what it is this object and that's what we have right here but there are still some dark areas so we added a soft light to fill all those shadows in 
and we can always make it darker if you like. Now we have an area light which is bringing in some more contrast. So we have these brightened and more exposed areas right here and there are some highlights. Then we add a main light that is going to give more shape to the entire model. This one is optional. Uh, if you do not like this and you think this is fine, you can go for this. Uh, I think this is a better representation of the model. We still keep our gradient. Maybe it could be a little bit softer, something like this. And finally, we have the light that's going to fill in the logo, which we always want to see. Now, here we can move onwards to some more specific lights or some specific colors. So if I enter into this and look at what it does, we can play around with the color warmth of this. So let me turn this off. I'm going to make it more bluish, for example, and maybe this one as well. That's way too blue, maybe a bit less soft light. This is what it's doing. These are the rim lights that we added right there. So let's make it more bluish. I'm going to stick with the same color tone in this case. So this is the way to light a product. In this case, I really didn't want to have this be a follow along tutorial where you just play some lights. I actually try to make you understand the thought process behind lighting. And what we can do now that we have this is actually, let's place all of these lights in its own collection. I'm going to call it headphone lights. Then I'm going to select the headphone, open Lumio to light linking collection. The light collection is the headphone lights and the headphones is the collection, add light linking. So now that we've added the light linking, we can add a background. So let's say we add a plane, bring it up high, let's select these two, control B, First, apply the skill, control A, apply the skill, give it a uh, big bevel. I like adding a subdivision surface modifier as well. This is optional. And then I will go over here, shader editor, new, make it white, wider. And then I will add a light, area light. And we can also give this a gradient. And now we can basically give it any color we like. We can either keep the gradient like this or bring the plane down make it more of a flat area on the back and make the plane, let's say, blue. And now we have a pretty cool blue tone. Or we can make it orange. And the lighting will still work on our main model. And one thing that we might need to do is go over to the headphone lights and change the power of all of these at once if we want to make it stronger so we don't have to go back into each and every single light. We can just do it from here. And using these principles, I'm going to slightly improve some of these lighting setups. So I want more highlights over here, for example. And there's one more final thing that we can do. If you would like to do that, we can open the HRI browser. And this really adds something to your final model and the overall look of it. So make sure to play around with that, but don't make it too strong because we didn't make a lighting setup for nothing. I recommend you to use these principles and find a good lighting setup for yourself. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial on where to place your lights. This is more about the theory of where your light should be placed and why. If you're interested, you can check out the King of Light bundle pack. It contains Lumio, 365 Gobos and Geolights Pro. And if you want to watch the next video or we're going to do some animations, I highly recommend clicking right here.